To introduce our main program, our speaker is Adil Palkavali. Palkavali, I hope I got that right. Um, please welcome, to introduce him, 34-year Rotarian and one of the hardest working members of the program committee year after year, Mark Davis. <clears throat> Adil is one of the foremost yoga masters in the world. He has degrees in physics, mathematics, law, and he has practiced law. He has lectured at many Fortune 500 firms and has traveled three million miles teaching yoga. Yoga Now started for me in 1995 at Adil's studio. I practice yoga with him every week for the last 25 years. And for me, my family, my business, and Rotary is one of the most important parts of my week. Please welcome Adil <clears throat> to Seattle Rotary. Thank you. Thank you for having me today. With your indulgence, could we all start with the prayer that is the root of yoga. So if you'll sit up erect, bring your hands together, and join me for a prayer that has been recited for close to 6,000 years. Savitur Varenyam Bargo Devasya Hadi Mahi Deoyona Prachodayat Today, I'm going to try to synopsize 6,000 years of tradition in 20 minutes. <laughs> this is impossible, but let's do our best. So what is yoga? How many of you have taken a yoga class before? Could you raise your hands, please? That is, mm, wow, 90%. Wow, good. When I came to the West in 1979, uh, I think you have all asked, do you mean yogurt? I mean, it's grown so dramatically from what it used to be. Why? Well, let me tell you first of all, what is yoga? Everything that is yoga is synopsized in what the chant I just recited means. What is the chant? It says, O oh, divinity that manifests as light, come fill our consciousness. O oh, divinity, divinity, no religion, because yoga was created long before religion existed. It's a non-religious subject. O oh, divinity that manifests as light, Come fill our consciousness, not mine. It is not a prayer that is selfish. It is a prayer that is benevolent. And it's very 
Rotarian in that case, isn't it? It's the spreading, it's the generosity, it's the service above self concept. Let that light fill the consciousness of humanity. Now, it doesn't matter which religion you look at, whether you look at Judaism or Christianity or Zoroastrianism or Islam, it doesn't matter which religion you look at, there is always light in the faith. There is a candle burning, there's a fire burning, there's a flame burning, there's always light. I myself was born a Zoroastrian, which is the world's oldest revealed religion. And we are called the fire worshippers because we worship the fire. Not because we worship the fire, but because we worship it as a symbol of purity. Because it cleanses. So then what is yoga? Not necessarily the modern stuff that we market as yoga, but the traditional yoga of which I've been a part before I was born. My mother was practicing while I was in her womb. Hmm? That traditional yoga is a system to develop self-awareness, to get to know yourself, to get to look at the gook that is stuck inside as well as the beauty that we hold, and then to transform the gook and enhance the beauty. So it's a whole system of self-awareness. In yoga, it's called swadhyaya, getting to know yourself. And then once you have a control over this part of you, then you can apply it in your life. So the yoga that we teach called Purna Yoga, which is from the lineage of Sri Aurobindo, this yoga is a yoga of application in life. It is not a yoga of escape. I go to yoga class, oh good, I've done my yoga, now I can be mediocre again. <laughs> huh? It is not that concept. It is a concept, concept of constant self-awareness in three levels. The thoughts we think, the words we speak, and the actions we make. These three things are, for a student of authentic yoga, paramount. We are constantly watching our thoughts. Do our thoughts serve us? We are constantly watching our words. Are our words truthful? Are our words fair? Are our words kind? Will it build goodwill? This is exactly the foundation of yoga. And then our actions, which we call karma or kriya, are our actions at the highest level. So yoga is not exercise at all. Yoga is not exercise at all. Yoga is a system by which you get to know yourself and then live more fully, thank you, in the world. Live more fully in the world. So now I want to talk a little bit about business because there are so many business people. I was talking to a few of you. And in the concept of a yogic business as compared to a non-yogic business. Therein, I want you to see in your mind the difference between profitability and success. Profitability is when wealth increases and you're comfortable. But there is a byproduct, either conscious or subconscious stress. There is a byproduct, conscious or subconscious stress. A successful business is one where, yes, you do have profit, you do have money, but your efforts serve. 
your efforts serve yourself, your family, your community, and the earth. Are you with me? Yeah. So that is the difference between a profitable business and a successful business. So in yoga, there is a whole system of how to create a successful business. And it is close to your heart business that you're talking about as a Rotary. I grew up with the Rotarians. The president of the Rotaries lived in my building, the Lions also. I grew up in a very affluent family, and uh, we were very closely connected with service. And so the business, that, business model that we followed in Alive, at Alive and Shine Center in Bellevue has been that. How can we serve the community? And that is the essence of yoga. yoga. I'll tell you a brief story. This is a, a colleague of mine, Larry. That's his real name, so I won't give you his last name. But Larry grew up in the deep south. He barely had a pair of pants to wear. And eventually, he left and became wealthy. He became extremely wealthy. He had a penthouse, $10 million penthouse in Manhattan on the park. And then he was voted the man of the year by Time magazine. He had just gone there, received the award, and he came home. And he tells me that when he walked in, the doorman of his building shook his hands and said, Sir, I'm so proud that a man of your distinction lives in a building that I serve. And then Larry took his elevator upstairs. Then he went to his balcony and stood on the balcony and looked at the city. And he says he stood there for two hours, contemplating whether he should jump or not. True story. After two hours, something moved and he went back in. The door opened and his wife came in. Where had his wife been? Guess. Come on. To a yoga class, yes. <laughs> and uh, he came in really despondent and she said, what happened? And he said, I was just contemplating killing myself. But I chose not to. And she said, I think you need to come to class. This is over two decades ago when I was in the Iyengar system. And so she took him to one of my students in New York. And he started the practice of yoga. Now again, I'm talking about yoga, not commercial yoga, but the real practice of yoga, where you learn to train your mind, where you learn the philosophy that has upboyed the human race for millennia. And today, he is truly happy with being alive from the practice of this very ancient, ancient system. Very important to realize that yoga is not exercise, even though we'll be doing stretches now. So before we do anything else, could I have the time? Does somebody have a, it's supposed to be on there. Okay, no problem. So. One okay. So I have, what, 15 minutes? 10 minutes. I want to do a test with everyone. Are you ready to be tested? Yes. Is that a yes? yes? Okay, good. Now, with your dominant hand, if you're left-hander, left hand, right-hander, right hand, point. Ominously. Okay. <laughs> 
Now, take that hand and point to a light bulb. Good. Now take that hand and point to an exit sign. Mm -hmm. Take that hand and point to somebody else. Now take that hand and point to yourself. Don't move, freeze. Look around the room. Look around the room. I think we have 100% here. We do actually, which is very rare. Usually somebody does this or something. Oh. Everyone is pointing in this area. Every one of you is pointing here. Thank you. And release your hand. Why are you pointing here? Why didn't you point here? Why didn't you point here? Why didn't you point here when most of the time you live here? Why? Hmm. Interesting, isn't it? You pointed here, and I've done this in major corporations and in big meetings with 5,000 people, and 99% of the people point here. We teach this to kindergarten, little kids. Say, so point to yourself. Say, hmm? So what this means is that you have a home and you are choosing to live in a motel. You have a home, you pointed here, but you spend most of our lives living here. Some people live down there, but let's leave them out of the In, in yoga, there are three sacred areas. All three areas in your body surrounded by bone. Your skull, cavity, your rib cage, cavity, and your pelvis, cavity. These three areas hold three powerful forces. The force of knowledge, the force of love, and the force of action. And in yoga, we learn how to take this action and transmute it to love, take the knowledge and bring it down so that you can refer to the love to make your thoughts viably useful. So if you like English, it's apotheosification of your thinking process. That means it is moving it towards a more divine realm. That is the process. OK? Yeah, you, it's fine to say yes or nod your head. It's an old Indian system, yes. And the last thing, before we do a couple of uh, helpful movements, is a little bit about my uncle. He shaped my life dramatically. Yes, my yoga teacher gave me birth <laughs> because my mother could not conceive for seven years. And my father's a very famous lawyer, perhaps the most famous in the country. And uh, we went to the top doctors and they said, you have a retroverted uterus, you'll never conceive. And she was a lawyer also, as am I, as all my brothers, we are all a legal family. And uh, finally, a co-devil at the bar said, why don't you try yoga? And so she found anger, and he said, in three months you'll be pregnant, but bring your husband with you. <laughs> and right enough, in three months she was pregnant. Yeah. And I have two more brothers. So this stuff really works, amazing <laughs> stuff. <yeah. laughs> when I was in London uh, teaching, uh, I ruptured my spine doing some weightlifting, two double herniations had to be taken flat to India. I wanted to operate, and I said, not a chance. I went back to my yoga teacher, BKS Iyengar. And with his work, I'm fine. No surgery required. Yoga is astonishingly powerful. So now, we'll leave my uncle alone for now. 
but I'm going to teach you two things. Let's start first with connecting with your breath. Sit up erect, shut your eyes, and feel your breath moving from your nostrils to your sinuses, to your lungs. Take a slow, deep inhalation. Take a quiet, complete exhalation. And as you exhale, feel your body becoming peaceful, parasympathetic, calm. Breath is life. Continue. Deep inhalation, deep exhalation. You are born with the inhalation, you die with the exhalation. Feel that birth and death with each breath. And then continue as you open your eyes and follow me. Place your hands next to your head like so. Your brain gives out waves, electroencephalic waves, every time you have a thought. So we're going to collect those waves and focus them. Inhale. Exhaling slowly, bring your hands together. Inhale, exhaling, move your hands down. Try to bring your brain to your heart. Now let's do that with your eyes closed. Lift your arms, inhale. Exhaling, gather those emanations of your brain, which are measurable in an electroencephalogram. Exhaling, move them down. I offer my mind to the love that lives in me. And for the third and last time, lift your arms. Exhaling, gather. Inhale. Exhaling down. And slowly release and open your eyes. Anytime you feel discombobulated, anytime you feel a little scattered, just stop. Take your arms up, center your brain, and bring it down. taught CEOs of major corporations to do this before they go on stage to speak and they say it makes my mind so focused I'd like to open it up for questions we got five minutes open it up for questions please Any questions about yoga? Yes, here we have a question. Question about, um, you hear about hot yoga. What do you think of hot yoga? You see, when yoga came to the West, people didn't understand what it was. So they adapted it to make it marketable. Mm -hmm. In our practice, we work with lineage. That's why you can't learn yoga from TV or from the internet, because it is a transmission of energy from teacher to student. This is a very authentic system. And so hot yoga is cute, but it is not really an authentic tradition. It was invented by a chap called Bikram, who is now in exile because of his violations to the human body. Yeah. We have a question from David from. Hi, could you please explain the relationship between yoga and the Buddhist uh, meditation tradition such as Vipassana and so on? Beautiful, thank you. Uh, Goenka, the uh, man who started Vipassana, 
used to send his students to my mother because it was so important for them to get really focused in their body. Buddhism has nothing to do with yoga. Hinduism has nothing to do with yoga. There is no connection between yoga and any religion at all. Yoga stands alone as one of the five different systems of philosophy and practice which came out of the Veda, the ancient Indian scripture. So there is no connection. Yeah. We make connections so that it becomes more familiar and you feel nice about it. But yoga stands alone. And you can use the effects of the practice to follow any faith. Any faith. Oops. Oops. <laughs> Can you explain uh, meditation, transcendental? Is yoga a form of meditation? How does, that, how does that apply? Beautiful question. I could not have planted a better question. The yoga, in its essence, is a system of completeness. That's why it's called purna. Purna means complete. It includes heartful meditation by Savitri. It includes the asana pranayama, the physical work and the breathing. It includes the philosophy and how to apply it to life. And it includes nutrition and lifestyle changes. Including what you're talking about here. This is lifestyle. This is how we live. So yes, it includes meditation and it is one part of it. But the meditation we do is not transcendental because all meditation has to be. Um, this is a system such as centering the mind. So Savitri has designed movement techniques. So you're not sitting and hoping. You're actually doing things to channel your energy. <laughs> Could you lift that up? In this package on your table, one of you will be lucky to get a class at Alive and Shine Center. So please, at each table, at each table, at every table. <laughs> and it is transferable. So if uh, you can't get to the east side, give it to a friend. Thank you all for having me. And thank you.